episode 10 of my crafting podcast. This is my vlog about knitting, crochet, yarn dyeing, anything else that feels like a good idea at the time. Um, my little kitten is not in her usual place. She's decided to sit on my lap instead. She's not as easy to motivate in the summer because it's warm outside. And... Anyway, sorry. Where was I? So, I'm coming to you from rural North Yorkshire in the north of England where I live with my husband, three daughters and three cats. Um, you can find me on Instagram as Mel Brown Crafting Podcast and also as Creative Escape Retreats. You can find me on Ravelry as Funky40 and we also have on Ravelry a group for the podcast called Mel Brown Crafting Podcast where you can come along and look at the videos and that's where all the show notes are. So anything I mentioned today... Um, I'll pop up on the screen, but I'll also put in the show notes. You can put it, see the link down below. That'll take you to Ravelry where all the links are. Right, that's the introductions over. So, there's a fly in here. And I hope it's not going to annoy you. It's already annoying me. So, what have we got today? We've got, where are they now? We've got new whips on the block. We've got some yarn dyeing. We've got some information on the courses I'm teaching, uh, freeform crochet we're going to have a look at today. Uh, we're going to have a quick update on Creative Escape. Uh, we've got something new and some plans. So, let's get going. Where are they now? What happened to the projects that you saw last time? Now, last time, if you watched, um, I only had two whips. And I was trying to see how long I could go with just two whips, whilst also not making things too boring for you guys. So I actually got through um, an entire week. So there's a two weeks before between podcasts. So during that period, the first week, I just worked on the two whips I had, which were the two long-term um, blanket projects. So I did make quite a bit of progress, um, not so much with the flower garden one, so the flower garden one, if you haven't seen it before, it's a crochet project, I'm not going to show it to you today because I haven't really made any progress on it, but the memory blanket, which is my knitted blanket, I did make quite a bit of progress on, it's really difficult to show you it, so I'll pop in a picture here, um, basically I finished another round of it so I'm doing it um, it starts in the center and uh, it all points outwards from there where is this for heaven's sake there it is oh upset the cat so it starts in the center and they all point outwards from there so I'm going out in kind of uh, squares out from there and I have finished this last square so these ones on the outer are the most recent ones. Um, beautiful. Um, so yeah it's very difficult for you to see and to appreciate it um, because these yarns aren't special to you but they are pretty colourful. Um, so that's another milestone done, another square round. Do you know how far I am through the project? 100 squares out of 425. So yeah, not a massive percentage through, excuse me. I've got Twining's fudge melts today. I steep these twice, so this is the second going of this bag. Mm. Lovely. Right, so, yeah, progress made, but still a very long-term project. My hair looks like it's... Oh, weird. Okay. So those are the where are they now, that's all there was. So a week I lasted with that and then I thought, right, okay, better start something interesting. So, new whips on the block. Where am I at with that? Um, actually, I think I need to explain yarn dyeing first because otherwise I can't explain the new whips. So, I talked last time about doing some mini skeins. Um, so sort of breaking a 100 gram skein into smaller ones and dyeing those separately. I wanted to do a gradient set for a pattern. I did it, but it wasn't straightforward. I'll put in some pictures here. Let me think. Um, the first attempt, what I did was I set up some Wilton's Violet and I um, made five 15 gram mini skeins, which is what the pattern required. And... Um, 
I threw them in and then after a minute, I, well, I threw the first one in and then after one minute I threw the second one in and I timed, kept timing, excuse me. Um, so the idea there would be a gradient of colour. One minute wasn't long enough. It was blue and the, the blue colour molecule is quite a lot bigger than, say, the red colour molecule. So it takes a lot longer to take into the yarn. So I didn't leave long enough. Um, so I'll put in some pictures here culminating in the, um, the mini skeins after the first dyeing. So they look nice and they're a nice kind of um, tonal uh, purpley blue which is lovely but not what I was looking for. So I then fired up the pot again with some red and I put three of the skeins in but I left a longer period in between so one of them went in and it was several minutes before the second went in and then when it looked like most of the colour had gone I put the third in and then let them cool she can't get comfortable today um, so that dealt with the red end but still at the other end they were too similar so I had the very end of a pot of blue um, which I fired up the pot with and I just put the other two in. So they weren't all completely different to each other but there's a definite um, look of a gradient so I'll show you what the finished objects look like. So if you have ever looked at um, a set of minis and you thought why are they so expensive it's only 100 grams of yarn I can tell you why and you'll find out yourself if you ever decide to dye a set of minis yourself because just the skeining of them and tying of the skeins and then the dyeing of them and then getting them all dry and then re-skeining them into balls it's such a faff and as a project for me it was a labour of love and I really enjoyed it but to do that commercially oh my goodness so if you ever wondered why mini skeins are so expensive try a set yourself and you'll know why and if you do don't forget to use the hashtag die one skein or die several mini skeins whichever you like so that's what I did really really enjoyed it uh, but not in a rush to do it again so the pattern I wanted to make with that is from this lovely book the shawl project um, there are several versions of them it's by Joanne Scrace and Kat Goldin um, uh, this is book three I know there's at least uh, one more book come out. I got this at Yarndale last year and that a bit of reflection there but I think you can just see the five projects. The one I wanted to start with is that one. So that's what the mini skeins were for. So I have started. Um, it's fairly slow going for me. Um, one of the things uh, I did recently was I taught a a beginner's crochet course which was fab and the two things that I said to them and I firmly believe the two skills of crochet is holding your hand so that the yarn is tensioned so you can grab it and once you've done that it's learning where to stick it and that is for me one of the hardest skills of crochet is working out exactly where to put your hook each time and that is what um, is slowing me down with this project I've got it in my Mad as a Hatter um, four C's bag um, and I am, I've just finished the first colour. So, there it is. It's pretty, isn't it? So you do the edge first and then you do the, the main bit. Um, so that's the, the most red. So it was purple. Now that, that colour really isn't going to come out there. But it's um, a maroony red and very speckled as my yarn dyeing efforts usually are. There's lots of um, speckles of different colours. So I've just finished with that colour. I have had to come to a stop because the next colour that I need to work with, um, sorry about the rustling, is actually still in a mini skein format. Not that one. It's the dead one. It's still <laughs> like this, so I can't work from it. So hubby and I are going to have to wind that tonight. Um, so yeah, that's the, um, oh, I'll put in a little picky here of the, uh, of the colourways I'm using for the whole project. 
So the other yarn is Exmoor um, sock. This is lovely. I bought this in Edinburgh. My friend Dolbelly um, from the Dolbelly Knits podcast and I went and did our beer and balls tour. Balls and beer, don't know. Tour of Edinburgh two years ago. We didn't um, coincide it with the yarn festival, sadly. But we basically spent the weekend in bars drinking cider or beer and knitting um, and crocheting. And it was lovely. And we went to Ginger Twist, which is in Edinburgh. Wonderful little shop. And that's why I bought that. So that is the other, um, the other yarn that's going to make the main body of it. The lighting is weird. So that's a teal. So... That's on the way. Got this much left of that first skein, so there'll be plenty left for my um, my memories blanket. So yeah, that's good. Uh, did I tell you it's called Wisteria Trellis? I, I first saw this. Sandra from Cherry Heart podcast was making this, and I thought, oh, I've got that book. Um, so that's what prompted me to get it going. So that's a new whip on the block. Um, another one. I can't really call it a whip because I've finished it. Oh, just realised. I didn't bring the socks in from the line. Right, sorry about that. So, this is a story of disappointment and finally achievement. So, on Christmas Eve last year, I started a pair of socks. Um, I, it was the little, little Bobbins Christmas Eve cast on. I was really excited about it because I've never done um, I've done that before. Little Bobbins is a podcast um, that I love. So um, I, it was also my first year of not drinking. I, um, I gave up alcohol in August last year, just felt it wasn't doing me any good. Um, and previously, for the last 10 or 20 years, um, I would have been drinking on Christmas Eve and I would have um, been too drunk to knit really. But this was my first year of not drinking and I thought a New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve cast on would be a great way of kind of focusing on what I am doing rather than what I'm not doing. So I cast on a pair of socks and I was using Easy Knits. I don't have the ball band, I'm really annoyed with myself, but it was, um, I'll put up here what, what the yarn was because I can't quite recall right now. And I absolutely loved the way it looked knitting up. I was doing a pattern on the top, um, Hermione's Everyday Sock, I think, yes. But, here we go, that's the top. So you can see the pattern on there. But actually, I really loved that. I really loved the stockinette in those colours. And I was quite disappointed in many ways that I'd chosen to do a stitch pattern because I wanted to see that. And then, just to add to my disappointment, um, I made them too long and they just didn't fit in. You know when you put your foot in a trainer or shoe and it's great because sort of bunch of heel comes up to the end and it pushes up and it just gets in the way and you think, I'm not going to be able to wear these. So I was so disappointed. But, strangely enough, they fit my husband. On my size feet, 7 to 8 UK size, he's about 12. But they fitted him, so he inherited these socks. Um, and I did seriously consider frogging them because I really wanted this. But I realised I had just enough yarn to pull off a little mini skein for Doll Belly and to have enough left to knit another pair if I did different soles, toes, heels and cuff. So, this is a long story to get around to the Finally Mine socks which I cast on a week ago today. And I finished yesterday. It's quite quick for me. It doesn't normally take me just six days. So, I started off with heels and, uh, sorry, um, toes in this, which is um, really, really nice. After I, you know, I had that bad experience with the um, West Yorkshire spinners. Um, excuse me for the rustling, I'm looking for the ball band. Um, the West Yorkshire spinners black yarn that I used for my um, bird of fire. Somebody at the yarn shop, my lovely yarn shop, yarn etc, had said that sometimes the dyes are used for making black, make the yarn really rough and horrible, and I thought, oh, grim, that's a bit grim. But this, I'll put it up here because I can't find the ball band. This is opal, 
um, pullover and sock and vol or something. It is really soft. It's lovely. It's it's not black. It's navy blue. Doesn't look like it on the screen, but it's navy blue. And it's lovely and soft. I, I was really really pleased with this. So here we go. Um, opal toe and then just stocking net. And this is my standard sock recipe. Um, 64 stitches, two circulars, two at a time. Um, German uh, 2.75 millimeter um, needles, which is US. Oh, I'm going to guess. Oh, I think US size two. I've got my little card from Stephen and Penelope. Uh, 2.75 US two. Look at that. Ten episodes, and I've learned. So US size two, 2.75 millimeter needles. German short row heel, which is definitely my favourite. Very easy to memorise. And then I knew I was running out of yarn. So I decided, oh, that's not the best side. I decided to alternate the opal with the um, easy knits before I got to the cuff. Oh, I got in a pickle, I really did. When I started off with this, I was doing both from the same ball. So on the inside and the outside of the ball. That was okay. And I got to this, I had two separate balls because I'd already wound them before. They weren't the same size, but that was okay. When I got to the heel, I was only doing one at a time. So I had the two... Um, uh, easy knit balls and one going from the opal so that was okay when I got back up to here I disconnected the opal and I had the two easy knit balls it was all fine until I got to here and I decided to alternate once the smaller ball was run out so um, at that point I started working on both socks one from one end and one from the other end of what was left of the easy knits um, well, I wanted to, but I couldn't find the end. By the time I'd finally found the end, I'd made such a mess of the ball. It took me ages to rewind it. And then I had it wrapped around a moisturiser um, tube to try and uh, work from the inside and the outside at once. It didn't work. So I thought, right, I'll wind them both together, then I'll cut when I know where the middle is, and then I'll wind them in two separate balls. Oh, goodness me, the time that took. Got myself in a right mess. But... It was worth it. So I alternated the opal with the easy knit um, until I figured it was pretty much time to start the rib. And that left me with two really small little balls left to go into my memory blanket. Although I had forgotten that I actually had already... Um, oh, yeah, I didn't. That's a different... Oh, I thought that was it. That is it. Yeah, I had got myself a really tiny little sort of five or six gram piece. So I have already got some in, as it turns out. So um, uh, one by one, twisted rib at the top. Um, and they're done. Uh, they were blocking on the line. I forgot to, I soaked them last night and forgot to come down and actually put them on the blocking, uh, the blockers. So they were soaking all night. They don't seem to mind too much. So, finally mine. They are my, for the box of socks, Cal, they are my finishing July socks. And it is currently the 22nd of June. So I'm well ahead of myself, which is great. So means I can um, take the pressure off because I'll tell you in my plans, I need to take the pressure off. So, they're done. Not quite a new whip on the block, but there we go. Right, that's that. Um, and then last night I started another project. Um, I wanted to carry on with the wisteria trellis, but I couldn't because I couldn't wind that little skein on my own and hubby was busy, so. Excuse me. So, I started Rockin' Rose by Martina Bain. I love Martina Bain's projects, uh, patterns. I think they're so beautiful. I did start Match and Move um, a month, two months ago. I did mention it on here. But I was using a, a yarn, German yarn, which I thought was just a normal fingering weight, but it wasn't. It was 150 grams, and it didn't even have 400 meters. So I don't know what weight you'd call that. I mean, you might call that sport weight. I don't know. Anyway, I realised after I started, I wasn't going to have anywhere near enough yardage, so I stopped. Um, um, but Rocking Rose was also. It was in my um, up next that I showed you last week. Um, and I decided to get around to doing that. So it's in my bag that me and my daughter made together. Just various little thingy bobs on there. So 
Let me show you a picture of the pattern. It's a paid for pattern, so I'm not going to show you much. Um, all right, okay. So, yeah, it's garter stitch um, and it's very geometric and obviously one of those projects where you just kind of get the hang of it and then you just keep plodding away with it being garter stitch as well, really easy. So, I used some yarn that I bought for um, a project years ago, three or four years ago, and I did it and I didn't like it. And I uh, frogged it and I've, I've had the yarn ever since. So it's all just style craft, it's nothing fancy. Style craft um, special four ply in four colours. It's part, I know I've got colour parchment and mocha. I can't quite recall what the other two colours are. If I find them, I'll put them up here. Um, but it's just kind of workhorse yarn. It's 100% um, uh, acrylic, just really sturdy stuff. Quite a lot of yardage is 422 metres. Um, so I guess that might consider, be considered light fingering. Don't know. Anyway, um, so I started and I love it. I really love it. It looks a bit like a thong at the moment. It's funny how my socks start out like a bra. And this starts out like a thong. The um, match removed it as well. Can you see the four different colours? No, I don't think you can. Navy blue, a kind of a different kind of a blue. Then there's a brown, and it just it just started out as a cream. You can't really see the cream yet, but there's that. So um, it's very small so far. Really enjoying it. Really, really simple. I just know I'm going to plod away at this. Um, and if I don't put another pair of socks on the needles, then it'll just be my kind of go-to project to grab and take out of the house. Um, yeah, really enjoying that. What am I using? Four millimetre needle. Um, she says three and a half to four, depending on gauge. I'm one of those people who never does a gauge swatch. Um, so I went for the bigger of the, of the two options because I want it to be nice and big. Um, a four millimetre needle is a US size six. So, um, obviously bigger than you'd normally use for a four ply, so it's going, going to be quite an open weave, open fabric. Right, so those are the new whips on the block. So my whip count is now up from two to four. But that doesn't include any socks. I've got uh, the long term blanket projects, one knit, one crochet. I've got the Wisteria Trellis crochet project and the Rocky and Rose Knitting Project. So, I'm well balanced, but I don't have any socks. Um, so I think I'll probably cast on some socks, but being as I'm well ahead of myself already for the box of socks, don't know. So, whip count is four. What's yours? Right, okay, that's that one done. Courses. So, um, this is a segment I don't always do, but I have started teaching again after two or so years of not teaching, and I am loving it. So, last um, couple of week, couple of episodes ago, I was talking to you about Tunisi and crochet. That course starts. Sorry about it, Gino's. That course starts uh, a week on Saturday. Uh, finishes and starts. It's only one day thing. Um, and but I'm starting a free form crochet course Tuesday next week it's on the evening uh, there's two sessions seven till nine two uh, Tuesdays in a row so I thought I have a quick chat to you about freeform crochet um, I don't know if you've ever done it before um, the concept of freeform is that you don't have a pattern well I was rather confused when I did some searching for pictures about a freeform crochet pattern which kind of defeats the purpose for me but you know if it works for you but the concept is that you don't have a pattern you don't have a guide you don't get told what to do you just pick up a hook and you do what you want to and quite often it's spontaneous um, you're deciding what to do as you're doing it it might not be that way you know there's some people who just don't work that way they decide in advance what they want to do but the thing is it's not for to a pattern it's not to somebody else's um, uh, idea of what to do and it's not like designing a pattern because you're not writing you don't write it down what you're doing and so you can do it again you just do what you're doing and then um, come with the effects this is probably the closest thing to a freeform project that I'm prepared to show you today. It's not crochet, although obviously there are pieces of crochet on it, but it's a freeform crafting project. Um, and 
uh, if you haven't watched earlier episodes, you know, don't be alarmed if you find it ugly. It, it's okay. It's it's mine. It's it's very personal to me, and I love it. Um, and freeform can be like that. I mean, there are some freeform projects that everybody loves, but generally, it's quite a personal thing. Um, so uh, I thought I just got a, a few little bits and pieces. One of the ways that people often do freeform crochet is to make small pieces that um, they tend to be called scrumbles. And then you have a bag of them together and you put them together and you decide what you're going to do with them. You don't have to do it that way. You can join them as you go and just make it build out from where you start. But here are just a few examples of, um, of scrumbles I've made in the past. So this is bullion stitch here. And then I've switched to a ribbon yarn. It's quite a stretchy one to do just a standard um, outer. And this one is a, a spiral of just... Uh, what are that? It's a UK treble US double crochet spiral in three colours. Um, we've got a little flower circle here. One of the things that you often do with freeform crochet is to make it three dimensional. So what I, you can do with something like that is to wrap it and make it into a flower. And then stitch it onto something. And then even more wacky, you can um, make a grid. These are with um, US single UK double crochets quite dense with a small hook and then I've used it to just do some embroidery on the top and here's some surface crochet so I've done a double crochet built into the surface of the um, existing crochet so there's lots of different techniques you can use um, but basically just making it up as you go along which as you might know if you've watched a few of my episodes is something I do a lot so that's freeform crochet. Of course, it's running in Harrogate, um, at Yarn, etc. There's still uh, some spaces if anybody fancies and is local coming along. Just contact Yarn, etc. to book a, a place. Right. Yeah, that's courses. Oh, I did um, I did the beginner's crochet one. I meant to say to you, if you if you are subscribing, then and I put a new video on. It says with oh, a new video. But it wasn't a it wasn't a podcast. It was um, a beginner's crochet tutorial, and some of you watched it and thought must have thought, what on earth am I watching this for? Sorry about that. I didn't know any other way. I didn't know a way to not make it pop up in people's feed. I put it into a playlist, which is the playlist I gave to the people I taught the beginner's crochet to, which has some um, some great uh, videos that are already on YouTube and a video of me just making the flower, which was the project we did on the day. So if you saw that and, and accidentally watched it and thought, why am I doing this? Sorry about that. Right, um, quick update on Creative Escape. Um, this is my uh, knitting and crochet retreat business, but not just knitting and crochet retreats. Um, it's launched a month or two ago, last month, um, and uh, we've got three knitting crochet retreats booked for the autumn. And I just wanted to make a quick announcement is that I have just um, agreed a collaboration with Northshire Yarns or Northshire Yarns, I'm not sure how she pronounces it. Anyway, it's the lovely Annie from there who I met up with this week. She, I'll put a link onto the, her website. Actually, here's a few pictures of some of her yarn. So she dyes, um, hand paints all of her yarn and it is absolutely gorgeous. There's alpaca, there's silk, there's merino, there's all kinds of lovely stuff absolutely beautiful and I'm really delighted to announce that. You know last time I was talking about the goodie bags I wanted to give people a skein of yarn that was special to the retreat and I was going to dye it up myself. Well now anybody who comes on the retreat is going to get a Northshire Yarns skein of yarn. Um, she's going to dye them for us in a special retreat colourway. So exciting and she's also going to do a pop-up shop for us. So if you come to a retreat, you get a local indie dyer visiting um, and you can buy some of her gorgeous, you can squish and then buy some of her gorgeous yarn. So that's very exciting for me. Um, uh, also, I am meeting next week with a creative writing tutor because I'm going to offer a short story uh, retreat in the spring. need to sort out formats and dates, but more than likely in the spring. So if you're interested in that, have a look at the website, which I'm sure will be here, um, and more details will be there. Okay, something new. Now, I went to the Cone Exchange. If you don't remember what that's about, it's about two or three episodes ago, I went to this place, which is like a, a thrift shop, a second-hand shop, a charity shop for craft supplies. Oh, do you like my nails? 
Beth Rococo in Harrogate does them. Oh, gorgeous. Okay, so um, I went there and I was wanting to get some crochet hook. I was teaching beginners crochet. I'd been there before and I'd got lots of crochet hooks to give to people for that because I wanted them to have something to take away with them. And it was a really exciting thought that although these women may not have crocheted before, their hook has. <laughs> so they had a second hand hook that may have made dozens of blankets before or something, so it was cool. So I went back there to get another batch of crochet hooks and I was so determined not to buy any yarn. But my enabling yarn dyeing friend, Kathy, had suggested chevron shenanigans. I think I'm going to sneeze, so I might have to cut that out. Bear with me if you do here. That was a sneeze. Um, so she'd suggested chevron shenanigans. And actually, when I went to the Stephen and Penelope shop in Amsterdam last month, I did mention that to the guy who was working there. Sadly, Stephen wasn't there. Um, and he said, you can actually use um, skeins, you know, leftover skeins for some of the colours. Well, actually, you need 50... Or 60 grams and I don't have left over 50 or 60 grams I might have 30 um, but not 50 or 60 so um, thinking about wanting to do this because I've always wanted to do a Stephen West uh, shawl but they're just so big and I'm not a fan of brioche which is in a lot of them and I certainly am not a fan of spending 20 or 30 pound on a skein and three to five of them um, so I wanted to get some sock weight yarn that would enable me to do chevron shenanigans without spending loads and loads of money. Well, I needed, this project needs around 300 grams. I came home with 1300 grams. This is a bit shameful actually, but I'm gonna, gonna bear my soul to you. A um, bit of crinkling. What happens at the cone exchange is um, they inherit or they get given, donated, um, cones of yarn from uh, processes that don't need them anymore, so it's sort of bin end type things. And they then, um, struck the lady there, she said that the people don't buy stuff on cones, they just don't like it. So what she does is she winds it off on her ball winder at home onto balls and puts them in bags and then they sell much better that way. The problem is the cones don't come with um, labels because they're part used, so you don't know what the um, fibre is for them. That is a bit of a downside for some projects. Um, certainly I wouldn't make sock yarn, uh, sorry, I wouldn't make socks out of a, um, a, a yarn that I didn't know the fibre of because if it's not strong enough or whatever, it's not gonna work. But um, for the chevron shenanigans, I thought I would take a risk. So here is yarn number one. It is lots of shades of blue all the way from almost white through to navy. And I got um, 220 grams of that, and that cost me £2.50. I'm going to keep one of each here so I can show you them all together and see what you think. This one is a lovely soft lilac -y colour. I got about 400 grams of that, and that was £7. Then this one, there's a lot of this one, it's about... Oh, 360 of that, that's a lovely, it's not really a teal, yeah it is a teal, but it's kind of very greeny teal. Uh, that cost me five pounds. And finally, this 320 grams, that cost me four pound. Now this one, I would say there's, this is linen or thereabouts, it's got a kind of, quite a, not a hard, but it's got a texture to it that makes me think linen, which is fine because although it's quite rough now, it, it would soften up with washing, I suspect. So what we've got is these four. Now I chose them because I like the colors. That doesn't necessarily mean they go well together but that's what they are, so I'm gonna make that work. I'm really, really delighted. So adding that all up together, it was less than 20 pound for 1300 grams of yarn. And yes, I don't know what the fiber is. Um, they're all soft enough to wear next to my skin, which is pretty much the key thing. Starry Eyes Alley, do you watch that? If you don't watch her, you should. 
she's brilliant um she wears she puts things on her head and beef sugar does that as well a lot of people do that put them put them on your face and yeah mad so um i think they look lovely together but we will see um so yeah absolutely tons of yarn that i came back with 1300 grams <sighs> okay that's my guilt trip over so that's all that done right um just plans and we're done so i want to work on more of the up next you know i showed you that box last episode of my up next there is a, a sweater in there you know that lovely thing with a hood inuit it's called with a hood and the little bands of different color on here um i do want to start that but i don't think i'm going to not now because um on my family holiday we we go away with my husband's family um this year we're going with his brother and her uh, and wife and dave's mum and her partner um we typically go to the seaside somewhere in the uk and we're going to north yorkshire so not too far for us to, to go this year typically i start on that holiday my christmas knitting and I will knit or crochet something for everybody in the family who wants something and is worthy of it. Um, so um, I probably am not going to, I mean, that's, that's what, six weeks away. I'm not going to finish a sweater in six weeks. And once I start Christmas knitting, I'll probably have a sock on the go for me all the time. But other than that, it would be mostly um, gift knitting. So I don't think I'm going to get around to that. I think I need to focus on that in January next year because I didn't do it this year because I was intimidated. I don't make um, sweaters, uh, jumpers, garments, that's the word, garments. I used to when I was younger. I think my mum still wears a intarsia 80s um, jumper I made for her back then. Um, but since I came back to knitting when I was 40... I've knitted one sweater and I really didn't enjoy that at all. Um, I didn't even sew it up. My mum sewed it up for me. Um, I really didn't even, <laughs> don't even like it. So um, I don't have much of a good history with garments. So I'm going to have to commit to it and really go ahead with it. I'm going to do it in January, I think. I should have started it in January this year. That's the beginning of my six months of uh, selfish knitting so pardon me um so i need to start asking people what they want for christmas and start getting that planned um but i do want to work through the up next part from the sweater and just you know take away with those until i have to get deeply into christmas knitting and then of course chevron shenanigans i do want to start that but kathy who um she's the one who suggested the knit along for bird of fire that I finished, I showed you last time. Um, she's just started that, so she's. Uh, I don't think she's going to want to start Chevron shenanigans for a while. So, I think I'll put that on the back burner. I've got the yarn; don't have to worry about it. In fact, that yarn, um, that combination, I should have loads left um, to do something else. I was thinking of all the Martina Bain um, projects, like uh, Match and Move, that I didn't have enough yarn for, and now I do. But I'm wondering how many different gar. Um, shawls excuse me um how many different shawls and things i want with the same colorways um same color combinations so i have to think about that so um those are the plans and that is me done so uh thank you very much for watching if you've got all the way to the end well done um i really do appreciate you watching if you've enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up um, if you'd like to hear the next one, see the next one, then uh, click subscribe and the little bell. Um, let me know your whip count down below. Oh, I forgot to say. Um, I bought ages ago, because I'm always ahead of myself, a skein of Biff Sugar yarns in the colourway Lowther, which is a teal. It's so beautiful. And it was for you. Um, I bought a skein for me in a different colourway, and I've used that for socks. But the Lowther one is for you. But um, I said I would do it at 100 subscribers. Me ticking away slowly. We're at 91. So we might have got to 100 by the time I record again in two weeks. If we do, then I'll announce a giveaway. And uh, just think so your odds are good here because if I've got 100 subscribers and I do a comment to get entered, you've got a 1% chance of winning a beautiful skinny yarn. Anyway, um, so 
thank you so much for watching um i really appreciate it um if you want to come along to the ravelry group um and uh did you hear that bird um oh and if you're out on a wednesday afternoon and you're knitting um either on your own or with other people and you're on instagram use the hashtag virtual knit group um, we're still using that. Dolbelly and I are doing it when we're not together with lots of uh, different places we've been knitting um, and we're virtually knitting together. So uh, use that if you're out there knitting and um, have a great two weeks. Happy crafting and I'll see you in a fortnight. Thank you. Bye.